Hi everyone, here is to chapter 10 to start, 10.2 planes, plane curves and parametric equations. So a little review from pre-calc is we're going to talk about eliminating the parameter and then we're going to sketch the graph. So if we jump straight to this portion here, eliminating the parameter, the parameter is t. So we have x in terms of t, we have y in terms of t. I need to eliminate t right and have just an equation in terms of y, uh, x and y so if i notice that y uh it, it might be easier to solve for what t squared is in terms of x all right so if we just add two to the other side we get what t squared is so then we can eliminate the parameter over here all right oops And we're going to do that by simply just substituting for what t squared is. So t squared is x plus 2. And when we clean this all up, we get y is equal to 2x plus 5. So we were able to eliminate the parameter. We have y in terms of x. All right. And now in order to graph this, we do need to graph in terms of that parameter, that time, that t value. So we can just choose and create a table of values here. Now for t, I'm going to choose negative values and positive values, and this should be enough to kind of see a pattern. So when t is negative 2, we can plug it in for um, to solve for x, we can plug it in to solve for y, and we get x to be 2 and y to be 9, and so on and so forth. When t is negative 1, x is negative 1, y is 3. When t is 0, x is negative 2, y is 1. When x is 1, sorry, when t is 1, x is negative 1, and y is 3. So you can see here at this point, this is a change in direction because our x and y values start going back to what they previously were. All right, so what does that look like graphically? Well, we would start by plotting this table uh, at time, or at t equals negative 2. We're at the point 2, 9. All right, so that's t equals negative 2. Uh, when t equals negative 1, we're at the point negative 1, 3. So you can see our graph is going in this direction, the motion, at least, of our graph, this parametric. When t equals 0, we're at negative 2, 1. And then you can see when we go back to t equaling 1, we're back at negative 1, 3. And when t equals 2, we're at 2, 9. So you can see we're coming in this direction. And at time t, or at t equals 0, that's our change in direction. We're going back up this way. All right. Now, if we need to talk domain and range, the domain is our t. All right. Because each x and y is in terms of t. So t is our domain. I can pick any value we want uh, for that domain. Our range is the x and the y, all right? And what we can see happening here is at this point here, this is our change in direction. x goes from negative 2 on to infinity, and you can see y goes from 1 on to infinity. All right? So now let's take a look at this next one, still pre-calculus review, hopefully. We're going to convert to rectangular, and we're going to find the domains here. Okay, the domain and range, I should say. Now, in this guy, we still have x and y in terms of t. All right, now when I see trig functions, we might be thinking some trig identities, which we will certainly have to use in this example here. All right, so I see sine of 2t, and I'm thinking, well, sine of 2t is really 2 sine t cosine t. All right, so we are going to rewrite x in terms of that. Now, I need to make a substitution, right? We need x and y only. We need to eliminate the uh, parameter, the parametric portion. So it's going to help if we square both sides here. If I square the left side, square the right side. And that's going to come into play later on, okay? So as we rewrite x to be 2 sine t cosine t. If I square both sides here, so square the left, square the right side here, we're going to get 4 sine squared t cosine squared. 
we've got our trig identity for what sine squared is, 1 minus cosine squared. Well, we were able to determine that cosine squared is really y squared. So here's where I this portion comes into play. Wherever that cosine squared is, we're going to substitute for y squared. And now we just clean it up. So we were able to eliminate the parameter. All right. And if we're talking about domain and range, okay, um, our domain again is our t's. All right, the t's, I can choose any values that I want for t, and I will get negative infinity to infinity. All right, our range x, well, x is in terms of sine of 2t. All right, so um, no matter what t is, the most I will go is from negative 1 to 1 because we're talking about that sine function. And the same thing for y since y is in terms of cosine of t. No matter what I plug in for t, the lowest I will go is negative 1. The highest I will go is positive 1. Okay, so now if we were to graph this, this table of values for picking a bunch of t values, we would get this um, figure 8 looking graph here. All right, uh, just a reminder, a few identities that uh, we have touched on many of times, but it's always a good reminder. So pause the video if you need to, to jot those down before moving on to the next example. Our last example is still yet some pre-calculus review for parametrics. We're going to convert to rectangular. We're going to find the domains and we're going to sketch. Uh, we don't need to use a calculator for this one necessarily. Uh, we should be good to go. So if we take a look, um, x and y are both in terms of some trig functions. So when you see that, sometimes it might help to uh, get that trig function all by itself. So cosine of theta is really equal to x plus 2 over 3. Uh, y is equal to negative 5 plus 3 sine of theta. So sine of theta equals y plus 5 over 3. Now, when we have some of this, how do we get something in terms of x and y? Well, this is where we can use our trig identity right off the bat to help us eliminate the parameter. So we can use the trig function or the trig identity cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Cosine squared uh, is going to be this value squared x plus 2 over 3 squared. Sine squared is y plus 5 over 3 squared, and that equals 1. Now, if we just kind of clean this up, uh, the denominators here are both 9, so if I multiply everything by 9, we end up with this uh, equation here. So we have eliminated the parameter. What we should notice is this is a circle, right, um, with a center of negative 2, negative 5, and a radius of 3. Okay, so uh, remembering that aspect of it. Okay, now... We could go ahead and graph this from here, all right, identifying our center, negative 2, negative 5. Our radius is 3, so we can count up, down, right, and left three units. Or we can think about the domain and the range. So our domain, again, is theta. I can choose any value I want for theta, and it won't affect anything. I will get an answer for x. I will get an answer for y. Now, how do I determine the range, my x values? Well, the x value, so x is equal to this negative 2 uh, plus 3 times the cosine times the cosine of theta, right? Well, cosine of theta, we know, um, goes from negative 1 to 1. So I'm just kind of putting uh, the domain of cosine in right here. So what we can do is we can distribute that 3 to both of those. So now we're going from negative 3 to 3. And then if I add negative 2 to both of these, our x values will go from negative 5 to 1. If you take a look at the graph, that is what happens, right? Our x values go from negative 5 to 1, okay? In terms of the y values, we can do a very similar uh, concept here. So y is equal to negative 5 plus 3 sine of theta. Sine of theta goes from negative 1 to 1. That's the domain of theta, right, or of sine of theta. So we can distribute that 3 once again, and we can add negative 5 to both of those values, 
and we'll get y to go from negative 8 to, or to, the, to negative 2. Again, if we take a look at our graph, that is exactly what y is doing. It goes from negative 8 to negative 2. All right, if you have any questions on 10.2, eliminating parameters, let us know.